All right. Uh, hello, folks. My name is Sayak, and today I have with me Neil. We both are machine learning engineers at Carton. Uh, we both are also pretty excited to be here. Uh, today, we would like to talk to you about improving Beam data flow pipelines for text data preprocessing. Here are our Twitter coordinates, uh, so feel free to connect with us and ask questions if you, uh, in case if you have any doubts after this session. Uh, so we have an exciting agenda uh, for this session, and we really hope by the end of this session, uh, you get to leave with some uh, good recipes in order to optimize your own uh, text reprocessing pipelines with Apache Beam uh, and Cloud Data Flow. So let's uh, start with the problem. So our inputs are raw text uh, text entries, and each of those text entries uh, comprises multiple sentences. Our ultimate goal is to train a machine learning model uh, on these inputs. But before we do that, as you might already know, the data needs to be in a suitable format that's easily understood by the machine learning model. And that is uh, known as data preprocessing, which is what we, uh, we are going to be covering uh, in this session. So as a part of the pre-processing routine, uh, we will first take each text entry. Remember that contains multiple sentences. We will first be tokenizing uh, each text entry, and we will then be uh, generating text embeddings with a pre-trained model. And this is fairly a generic uh, workflow uh, for many text preprocessing problems that deal with a lot of uh, lot of data, basically. Uh, and since these operations can be applied in a row by row manner, uh, we decided to go with uh, Apache Beam to orchestrate all the steps uh, within a single pipeline, starting from data ingestion to data serialization. Now, here are some tools uh, that we leverage in order to devise the pipeline. Uh, so our inputs come from BigQuery. We also use a Python library called Sentence Peter for splitting a piece of text into sentences. Our tokenizer and embedding models come from TensorFlow Hub. We use Apache Beam to pack different reprocessing steps into a pipeline. We use Cloud Dataflow as our pipeline runner. And finally, we use uh, Google Cloud Storage for saving all the artifacts. Uh, now, here's a close look uh, at the unoptimized pipeline that we'll be starting off with. And later in the session, Neil is going to share how this uh, pipeline can be improved significantly. So here's the initial design of our pipeline. The first step is to read data from BigQuery, and then uh, we will be pre-processing the text using a pre-trained tokenizer, and then we will take those uh, tokenized entries and then uh, generating text embeddings uh, using a pre-trained model, which is, by the way, bird-based model. Then we will serialize. Uh, then we will be serializing those embeddings as binary strings, and finally we'll be writing those binary strings as TensorFlow records uh, to to a Google Cloud Storage bucket. And as you can as you can notice, we will be leveraging three uh, main tools here: TensorFlow, Apache Beam, and Cloud Dataflow. And here's how uh, the schematic of uh, schematic of the Apache Beam pipeline looks like. Here we are leveraging the Python APIs uh, of Apache Beam. And one important detail here, one important detail to note here is that we are fusing uh, the tokenization and embedding generation uh, utilities into a single step. And I just wanted you folks to take note of this because this detail will come up to be very important as we proceed further in the session. But for now, just note that we are fusing the tokenization and embedding generation utilities into one. And we are doing that as a part of a single step. Now, what can be improved uh, inside this pipeline? Well, first of all, uh, the pre-trained model that we are using in order to generate the text embeddings, that's a bird-based model. It accepts a maximum sequence length of 512. Now, in order to uh, make the model operate uh, on batches of data, which is where most of the computational benefits comes from, each batch needs to contain sequences that are of uh, equal length. Now, if we simply pad or truncate each of the entries within a batch to 512, then it might lead to computational uh, wastages. 
because not all the entries will uh, will be close to the sequence length of 512 many in fact many will be much lower uh, than the length of 512 so naturally if we go with a universal uh, maximum sequence length it it will lead to compute risk and i hope this is clear from the uh, picture we can notice on the right now zooming in on uh, on the tokenization and embedding generation step remember i had already told you to take note of that and i have also provided the code snippet on the right uh, for providing additional context so for for that step uh, let's zoom in on a bit so remember that each description is a sequence of sentences uh, so in the naive in the in the naive approach for each uh, each description we essentially take all the sentences included there we then tokenize all the sentences, then we sort of pack it inside a batch and then pad it, and then we compute embeddings from the padded batches. So what's the problem here? Well, first of all, uh, tokenization uh, is a fairly CPU warm process, and it does not benefit a lot from special CPU instructions like AVX 512. But on the other hand, uh, ge generating embeddings, this step, actually benefits from vectorized uh, computation largely so essentially when we are converting converting all the sentences belonging to a particular sample it essentially is becoming a list of list of strings where the global uh, batches is just one so we are having to sort of uh, compute the embeddings for a single uh, for for a single description uh, which may not be computationally efficient now uh, as we can as we can notice, uh, we are uh, fusing tokenization and embedding generation into a single step. Where, whereas clearly enough, both these uh, two different utilities have different uh, computational needs. So naturally, this will lead to computational waste. Now I'll hand it off to Neil, who will take you through the rest of the session. Hi everyone, I'm Neil Abro. I work at Cardin as an NLP engineer, and it's a pleasure to be here. And I'll continue from, continuing from where Shark had left off. Let's take a look at the batches after applying the changes he talked about. So if you look at the image on the right, you will see there are 40 white, white squares, and each of these squares represent a padding token. Now, instead of using a global maximum sequence of it, length, which in our case is 512 tokens, if we just for a batch take the maximum sequence length as the maximum as the batch length, uh, we can reduce the number of tokens a bit. So from 41, we're down to 36 yellow square boxes on the right, which is the which are the padding tokens. Now we can definitely do better than that. So if we sort the sequences on the basis of their length and only then perform batching, the reduction in the proportion of padding tokens per batch is drastic. So from 41 padding tokens, we are down to only 11 in this case. We essentially break down what was a single step in the previous beam pipeline into three major steps. We first tokenize using a part two step followed by batching. And in the last step, we perform sorting, batching, plus padding, and in the end, encoding. Substep two over here is important because it creates a batch of sequences, which are then sorted and batched again before encoding. Without this step, we would have to wait for the pipeline to finish tokenizing all the sentences first, and then write a p-transform to sort all the tokenized sequences. Uh, this would have taken a long time and long waiting time. Apache Beam selects the batch size from within a given range on the basis of the downstream performance of the pipeline, which is an added bonus for us. In Substep 3, one thing to keep in mind is to unsort the embeddings once the batch operations are done. The steps we saw in the previous slide can be implemented like so. Embed examples here is a function that performs the sorting, padding, and unsorting of the embeddings. 
Now let's take a look at the performance gains we made by applying the simple yet effective optimization techniques. Here, the unoptimized pipeline uses a fixed length padding. Thus, all sentences are padded to a length of 512. Hence, from three days and 11 hours, we bring down the wall clock time down to two hours and 36 minutes after applying all the optimizations, which include decoupling of the tokenization from the encoding part and also sorting before batching. For a deeper look at our work, you can check out our blog post and our code. We would be happy to get any feedback. With this, I end our presentation. Thank you all for attending this talk and for your patient listening.